Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this latest edition of Blues Clues from our XBTV studios here at Gulfstream Park. So good to have your company, and very good, in fact. Excellent to have jockey Nick Juarez on the program. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Um, nice surprise, too, uh, maybe a month or so ago, opened up the racing form, and sure enough, your plans were, you know, in the news as far as staying here at Gulfstream Park after the championship meet. Off the bat, what was your initial thinking as far as not going back to the Northeast? Well, initially, I mean, you got to look at, you know, the racing down here in Florida. I mean, they have a great program throughout the summer, and it looks like they're just trying to increase that program to have year-round racing and someplace that everybody wants to go to, and uh, we really have that here in Gulfstream Park. And as opposed to where I usually go throughout the summer is uh, Monmouth Park. Uh, I won the title there last year, but the, the problem is we just don't have enough racing days. Uh, you know, you get to see the benefits that we have here at Gulfstream Park. It's four days a week of racing, five days. You know what I mean? It's just, it's great money and uh, great horsemen down here. And, you know, I'm just uh, really looking forward to the summer and, and, you know, and being here with this uh, colony. No, again, a nice surprise. And we're happy to have you and your talents uh, all spring and summer long at Gulfstream. And in looking at the jockey colony, the one thing that really jumps off the page to me, it's the youth in the room between uh, you, Edgar Zayas, Tyler Gaff-Leone, maybe Amisa al Jaramillo is a little older than the, than the three of you. Uh, what's what's the whole vibe like having such talented riders, but also riders who were the lead dogs who were in their early to mid twenties? Correct. I mean, like I said, I was talking with you earlier. I mean, it's just having that mutual respect between each other. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great talent in the room. You know, a lot of young riders, but you know, it's just trying to you know push all of us in the right direction, and um, you know, just we all want to be safe out there, and we're all trying to make a we're all we're all trying to you know make a living, and um, with they with the youth in there, you know, and that, that, that amount of talent, it can get a little, you know, uh, a little aggressive in races and stuff like that. But I think we all do a pretty good job of, uh, you know, with mutual respect and just, just trying to ride our best races. Now, you're a third generation jockey, but being a professional jockey wasn't wasn't on your radar after you graduated high school. What what tell tell us the story? No, you know I, I was always you know I, I think if you if you ask any jockey father whenever they say whenever they have a little kid I and mean, we got guys in the room now who have kids and you know they say hey is your son gonna be a, a rider? Is your son gonna be a jockey? And first thing they say no way no mm -hmm. way he's gonna go to school he's gonna be a doctor and my dad was the same way when I grew up and um, you know I, I I lived in the jocks room growing up and. Uh, just my dad always wanted me to do something else and um, I ended up graduating high school went to college for just a semester I really felt like it wasn't for me and you know uh, this is really in our blood and it's our mm -hmm. passion and um, you know I, I wrestled throughout high school too so I knew how to maintain my weight so I just said you know dad I really want to give Ryan a shot and uh, thank God everything's happened the way it's happened I'm very very fortunate um, it's just a, it's a passion that I love and, and I'm glad I chose to do this with a sincere love of thoroughbreds and horses. I mean, we were talking before we started, you also grew up on a farm, if I'm not. Yes, sir, I was in 4-H my whole life. I grew up in Maryland, raised cows and pigs and mm -hmm. chickens and everything else. And I think before I wanted to become a jockey, I said I was gonna be the next John Perdue or something. Mm -hmm. I said, I love my chickens. <laughs> Love your chickens. Yeah. Well, I, li I like chickens as well. You know, they're pretty, uh, pretty tasty. I like them, uh, <laughs> like them grilled. But is there a sense of pride? Because when I think of, say, Baltimore, Maryland, where you're from, you know, I don't. I think of a lot of things: crab cakes, the Preakness. I played lacrosse in high school and college. I think of lacrosse, but I don't think of a hotbed for a top jockey or top jockeys in general. So just talk about where you're from as far as being so successful from from Maryland. Um, you know, I think it all comes down to like, you know, it's not about exactly where you're from, but from where I'm from, it's like I, I grew up in a very rural area and uh, like I grew up wrestling and stuff like that. And uh, one thing my coach has always instilled in me is like the same thing I, I have about myself today in the room is mutual respect. And I had mutual respect as for wrestlers and, you know, it was a big camaraderie thing. And, uh, you know, I was just always taught from my coach, Coach Lowe, and, uh, you know, just... It's, it's a big respect thing, and that's where I come from. And, uh, you know, with taking care of the animals and stuff like that, the love for the horses, uh, that goes back to my roots in 4-H and, mm -hmm. you know, raising cows and stuff like that. It's, uh, you, know, you know, all that from where I'm from has really built me into the, into the person I am today. Well, that's great because as a fan of the game and a student of the game, it's, it's just it's awesome being on the other side, just seeing that sincere love that you have for thoroughbred horses and even – 
an amazing story with your first stakes winner in Valid. Uh, we did a feature on on uh, Nick in Valid recently. That's on on GulfstreamPark.com and our YouTube page. And uh, in prepping for Blues Clues, I had noticed you have a tattoo, a horse tattoo yeah. on your on your bicep that says family. It, yeah, it's pretty nice. awesome, yeah. you know. So I, I mean, it's just how about your love of Valid? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I said like in the video that's uh, on YouTube for on Gulfstream, but he was like my first stakes winner, and you know he was really instrumental in my career. And uh, it was like, like I said, right after losing my bug, and you know things are time, times are tough at that time. And mm -hmm. you know he was really like my backbone that really pushed me into to where I'm at today, and I'm very, very thankful for that. And you know now to have him off the track and to get on get on his back now, it's just a, it's a, it's a. It's just a remarkable feeling to know, you know, how much success we had on the track and, you know, how important he was to me and um, the last time he ever won here in the skip away and then now to be on his back now to see where he is, or it's just, it's, it's a really great feeling. And you think he knows, I'm sure he knows actually, he's very perceptive that he's with you now, he's safe, he's got a, a great life, he's got to be cognizant of that, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, when he got off the van, because when I bought him, he came all the way from Colorado. So it was like a 22, 23 hour trip for him. And when he got off the van and I was right there and he was, I had mints for him and everything. Like it would just, it, it just, everything changed. And I said, man, like he really knows. And uh, me and my dad were leaving the, the farm in Maryland. That's where he was originally. And I was like, you know, dad, it feels good. Like we finally did something really, really nice. And you know, you can go to bed. Like I could go to bed tonight knowing that he's safe. Yeah. Yeah, I think all the time, I mean, I'm a little older than you, but I love racing. I have uh, loved racing since my first trip to Belmont Park back in the summer of 1992. And when I stop and think about how fortunate I've been in my career and that I'm able to make a living by coming to the races every day and talking about these wonderful horses, I think we all have to do our part. I think that needs to resonate with everybody in the game if you're a fan of the game because these horses, I mean, they make everything possible for us. Absolutely. And then also the unsung heroes too, the guys in the backstretch, oh, yeah. you know. I mean, that's another big thing is to take care of those people. It's uh, you got to take care of everybody. I mean, like I said, it's a huge respect in the game is, uh, is what we need and, you know, compassion for, you know, horses and people alone. Uh, last question. It gets pretty hot here. Not your first rodeo down at Gulfstream Park. We're uh, kind of a quarter through, midway through April. Is it tougher? Do you take extra sort of uh, pregame requirements when the weather starts to get a little warmer riding here down in South Florida? I guess I stick with my coconut water. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a big thing. I mean, you keep up with your potassium. You try to stay with your water. Uh, you know, big things, I, I don't drink soda or anything like that, so I stay away from those type of things just because that, that gets in the way of your actual hydration. So, you know, just preparing for all this, I mean, it hasn't really gotten super, super mm -hmm. hot yet, but it's just to take care of your body and um, going into it, just, you know, just prepping for like another wrestling match. You know, I, I, you know, I, I used to cut my weight too in high school, and um, I, at least I was fortunate enough to learn how to do it the proper way, and uh, so now I know the the nutrients I need in my body going mm. into the summer and just maintaining my fitness and, you know, getting enough sleep at night, I guess. Well, sounds good. I'm glad you're taking care of yourself. It definitely shows out there on the racetrack, Nick, and uh, it's fun watching you ride, and thanks for coming on Blues Clues. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. All right, and that'll wrap it up, everybody. Nick Juarez riding here at Gulfstream Park, and we'll say goodbye and see you next time right here from our XBTV studios at beautiful Gulfstream Park. <laughs>